When we think of Linux, the Linux community, and all of the surrounding software, we generally like to think it's mostly volunteer run. And when we're talking about the user space, that's pretty much true. From the terminal to the desktop environment, most people are volunteers. There are a few projects that are standout exceptions like Critter, GIMP, OBS, Blender, which might have multiple full-time developers enough to make up like a full team, and the occasional small projects where the developer of that project makes enough to be full-time or part-time. Maybe they decided to go full-time making less than they would at a company, but they're still making money. But on the kernel side, there is no pretense of it being a volunteer-run project. Now, with basically every kernel release, LWN does this really great development breakdown, going over how much work was done, who did that work, who paid for the work, and while this is for the 6.0 release, not the 6.08 release, it's basically the same information every time. Sometimes names are going to swap around, sometimes new names appear on the list and old ones disappear, but it's giving you the same overall message and when it comes to people being paid to work on the kernel it is a lot more people than just you know the big name maintainers like Linus Torvalds and Greg Crower Hartman. Now just by looking at the list of the most active developers both by change sets and change lines it starts to give us a bit of insight of who's actually doing this development work. Now probably to protect their privacy LWN doesn't list out where every single one of these people work, but um, pretty much all of them have LinkedIn's, so finding that information is pretty straightforward. Now, not every single one of these devs is explicitly employed to be a kernel developer. Some of them are like senior software engineers and other related things, but a lot of these people are just straight up employed to be a Linux kernel engineer. And looking through that list, you start to notice a bit of a pattern of companies. Companies like Google, Intel, Lenaro, Meta, Red Hat, AMD, Huawei, and a bunch of other companies that you probably notice as being involved in Linux, involved in surrounding technologies. Lenaro, probably you've not heard of, they are fairly big in the ARM Linux space. They don't really have any consumer-facing endeavors you'd really care about. But it is absolutely not a coincidence that those jobs and those companies keep appearing. So this kernel release was one of the biggest kernel releases in a very long time and closest to the biggest. It had 2,034 developers, with the record being 2,086, with literally the release earlier. So... You know, there's a lot of people working on Linux right now, but of those 2,034 developers, this is kind of counting it in a weird way, but there were also 226 employers. So assuming that each of those employers have at least one employee, at least 226 employed developers. But many of them, like Google, Intel, and AMD, for example, likely have teams of people working on the kernel and driver-related code and things like that. So at a very low estimate of, let's say, approximately two people per company, 25% of the kernel developers are paid to be doing so. But I wouldn't be surprised if it was closer to like, you know, 750 or 1,000 people. But whether it's 10% or 90% does not really matter. What matters is the amount of work being done. So of the 15,402 change sets, just looking at the top 10 companies, none of the rest of them, it is 8,669 change sets. Well over half of the work. And then if you count up everything, not just from these employers here, but all 226 of them, the number is a lot closer to 90%. Basically, everything submitted to the kernel and merged into the kernel is done by a company. From little indie startup companies you've probably never heard of, like Intel, Google, Lenaro, AMD, Red Hat, Huawei, Meta, NVIDIA, SUSE, Oracle, IBM, ARM, MediaTek, Microchip Technology Inc., that one I've legitimately not heard of, NXP Semiconductors, Cirrus Logic, and Alibaba. 
And a really fun takeaway from this is AMD's lines of code changed. They are by far and away the most lines of code changed, 542,000. Now, if we go back up to this previous list, at the top of lines of code changed is this guy. This guy works at AMD. This is over half the lines of code change. Now, either this guy is constantly doing coke and is just coding every second of every day, or this is like an AMD rep who is the one who is submitting the code changes. Either way, if you really like writing a lot of code, even though the amount of change sets submitted is in fifth place, AMD seems like a great place to work. Now, this might surprise some people to know, but this idea that the Linux kernel was basically controlled by all of these companies is not new. It's been like this for a really, really long time. And that's not to say that your individual contributions aren't going to be valuable. There are a lot of really great additions to the kernel done by individuals, done by volunteers, but we cannot forget the fact that Linux basically wouldn't exist, at least in the state that it's currently in, and in the state where it's as usable as it really is, if it wasn't for all of these companies dumping all of this money in. And considering how important Linux really is, doing all of this development work is sort of to be expected. When we ignore companies whose entire business model is based around FOSS, like Lenaro and Red Hat, when we look at the rest of them, like Google or Meta or Nvidia or Huawei or Intel, it's not like they're just donating money to the Linux kernel just to do something good. They are developing Linux in their best interest, because they heavily use Linux either internally, in products they sell to users, in products they sell to other companies, they all heavily use Linux, and in many cases, if you go far enough down this list, you'll even start seeing Microsoft, because all of these companies use Linux in some fashion, and they want it to be achieving whatever goals they're trying to achieve, and if you're a company like AMD, if you're a company like Intel, you want the products you sell to work well on Linux, so these other companies can buy those products and put more money into Linux, and the cycle keeps continuing. Or take Google, for example. Google runs this giant collection of data-absorbing web services. They have Android, they have Chrome OS on their Chromebooks. All of these things heavily make use of Linux, or in the case of Chrome OS and Android, literally are Linux. Yes, there's going to be a lot of modifications on top of it to make it the product they are actually selling, but at its core, it is using the Linux kernel. And sure, if they want something to be better, they could just do it in their downstream project and then never send it back upstream. But in a lot of cases, it might actually make more sense to get it up into that mainline project. Let's say you want it across all of your projects. Let's say you're selling web servers and you want the software you run on your web servers to be better. Well, you're not running all of these different distros, so you want these distros to get better, so let's make the Linux kernel better, propagate those changes out, and then ultimately, the idea of a Linux web server is more valuable, and hey, you're selling Linux web servers, so maybe some people will come over to what you're doing. And I'm sure it does not hurt that working on an open source project like the Linux kernel acts as good PR. You can say, oh look, we did 500,000 lines of change for this kernel release, look at this big article, look at all these people talking about us, aren't we so great? And sure, I wouldn't doubt that's a part of it as well. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Did you have any idea how much corporate development there was done on the Linux kernel? Did you think it was a primarily volunteer run project? Did you think it was like maybe 50-50? Or did you know how much work was done by these companies? I would love to know. So if you like this video, remember to go and like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, subscribe, silly bearer pay, linked in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over T. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robinson Plays. That's going to be it for me, and I'm out. <laughs>